In late September, horror author and paranormal expert Sam Beltrusis invited lovers of the occult to Paracon, a weekend of ghostly lectures and haunted festivities. We went on the local scene to the John Carver Inn to watch the magic happen. So this weekend, just a bunch of weirdos from all over the country are coming together um, to kind of share their areas of expertise, their knowledge, um, their passion with all things strange and unusual, ranging from dark history, ghost stories, folklore, um, and everything that goes bump in the night. So MassCon this year is, has a focus of women in the paranormal, and I think that's amazing because you don't see a lot of female teams on TV anyways. You don't see a lot of females coming forward and sharing their, you know, we call it women's intuition or whatever, but um, it's really awesome to be in a space where women can talk about it openly and share experiences and know that we were all experiencing very similar things. So to me, it's very exciting and I think it's about time. I am thrilled that there is a raised awareness now of women and women in the paranormal and that women have made meaningful contributions to the field and are active and productive members of this community and I'm really glad that they're finally women are finally getting a spotlight on it and people are more aware of it. Women are really good at this actually because the way we multitask which is slightly different than the focus that men have it's a, it's actually a skill we are good at whether we're looking at the clairvoyant the medium the, the psychic on the shoot or or the tech person so I think empowerment means just we're taking our place Light and darker turning, black beyond burning, black spirits and white, red spirits and gray, mingle, mingle, mingle the way, without a thought out, around and about, a world within and a world without. The good come in and the ill stay out. I was that kid who just was all in, like I watched all the shows, I read all the things, I listened to the radio, um, and I had Karina as an older sister who, you know, we could talk about these things. As kids, we'd play Spot the Spirit. I was skeptical of myself for many years, and then it wasn't until I became, you know, 15, 16, where I realized who I was seeing, and they had passed years before I was born, and the messages came true, and so I've always, I've always been a believer, but skeptical of myself. Um, I met Leanne in high school, and we played volleyball together and she started talking about things that I considered at that time very weird. And, but I had fun with her, so I kept spending time with her and ended up at her home with her and her sister Kareen and watched them play Spot the Spirit and talk about crazy things and I witnessed crazy things and, and then they took me out into the first haunted location and ever since that it's been nonstop. I was a little kid. I just knew that those so-called imaginary friends were just not imaginary. And I think kids really do have this gift, but it just gets taught out of us in our modern, western, non-magical, non-mystical society, everything that's left brain focus on things. And it just didn't get taught out of me. Mom was like, yeah, grandma did that. And I was just obsessed with the dead. But it was never in a dark or morbid way. It was just like, they had so much to say. So I literally did my first seance, which is one of the things I'm known for. I was seven or eight years old in my little suburban Los Angeles home, went in the hall where there's no windows and doors, stuffed towels under the doors, and my little windowless hall filled with lights and orbs and shadows and sounds. And as I went screaming outside, I was jumping up and sat down at the same time going, this is real and this is something we can really control. And now for the living. Bell, the bell heaven and hell. To call the spirits to us now as we make this sacred vow. We are between the worlds. My, my most intense experience was in San Antonio um, with a particular spirit who had been roaming there for quite some time and just witnessing him and acknowledging his experience and being able to be shown the different points in his journey and speaking it out loud and then feeling the release that he experienced in that moment when I was able to speak it for him. That is probably one of the most intense things I've ever felt in my life. My most intense moment was when I was doing a seance and I was at a very haunted, very famous house built by Charlie Chaplin and the Rolling Stones lived there, Marilyn Manson lived there at the time and somebody burst into flames. Literally, angel wings of fire up his back, one of the cameramen, it was caught on camera, it was caught by two cameras, 
that was the most intense. So the freakiest moment I had, um, I was at a museum called Iron Island Museum in Buffalo, New York. And I was there by myself putting in a special activity for Halloween. And it was the middle of the day and I looked up and there was this large mirror that I just, I naturally don't like mirrors, they freak me out. And I actually saw like a shadowy figure dripping out of the mirror, almost like tar or ink. And I very quickly just like gathered up my supplies and like marched into a separate area that's supposed to be like the safe space. And I was not brave. I did not try to investigate. I did not try to debunk. I just got the heck out of there. My most intense moment was when I had survived a devastating car accident. And uh, while the doctors were working on me in the trauma room, I had an out of body experience. Now because the hospitals were full at the time, there was another person in the room with me who was also having an out of body experience. Uh, I survived, he did not. He attached himself to me for eight months. So you could say my most intense moment was eight months long. I have only been here a few hours and yes, Plymouth is haunted. I've been in this area a little bit, Concord area, because it's got so much history. It's got so much richness in the land. Just being on the boardwalk today, being by the replica Mayflower, being in the presence of where they landed, and the history of that. Yeah, we were all trying to tap in and there's something there. So just going through Burial Hill Cemetery and looking at the dates and you know the, the images carved on the stone. Here you have things from the 1600s, so much life, so much story, big in life, big in death. And you know, if you're Bob the Quiet Banker, you're Bob the Quiet Ghost. If you were some great war hero or movie star or whatever. So um, I've felt the energy since I got here. So it should be a fun weekend. I will say at my Airbnb, which is a beautiful Airbnb and very charming, I will say that I do have some resident spirits there. I, at least I can feel some presence there, but they don't want to mess with me, which is great because I don't want to mess with them. <laughs> We've walked around a little bit in Plymouth and just feeling into the different spaces and looking around you can definitely feel that Plymouth is haunted. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw and want to stay up to date with our latest content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to make sure you never miss out on the amazing discussions, insights, and entertainment we bring your way. And hey, if you find value in today's video, be sure to give a thumbs up by smashing that like button. We'll see you next time.